You are not the enemy of yourself. Don't compete with yourself. If you want to be the best of yourself, let it go and it'll come. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> Here we are. Here we are, Wim. It is so yeah. good to see you. Likewise, likewise. It wow. was a little bit technical, uh, whatever. Doesn't matter. We, we can handle always it. Always in the heart. And now exactly. it's on visual. Exactly. And we can handle anything. Anything, yeah. just a little hiccup, a bump in the road. It's never a roadblock that stops us. So that's perfect. Oh, it is. Looking good. It's so good to see you. It's an absolute pleasure and an honor to have you here. Um, it's, this has been a long time coming. We've known yeah. each other since 2017. Uh, I've known of your work since 2012 and 13. Well, around 2012 is the first time. And I, just to give, okay, just, just to stop for a second, let me just introduce Wim so that you know who I'm talking. I already mentioned, but I'm going to just go back again. Dutch athlete, one of my greatest mentors, one of my personal heroes. He has um, broken 26 Guinness World Records, including submerged, being submerged in ice for about an hour, 52 minutes and 42 seconds. That's like seven or eight different records. That was probably the last one. Swimming in icy waters for 50 meters, breaking it with 100 meters, crossing the enemy desert in shorts, climbing Mount Kilimanjaro in record time in shorts, climbing Mount Everest. I don't know what else you climbed, but <laughs> whatever you did, is, it's just incredible. And what got my attention just to tell you a backstory of what, I, what got me connected with Wim is in 2012, I saw a documentary talking about mutants that live among us. I think it was in the, in the um, yeah, I would imagine Discovery Channel. And they were talking about different people with superpowers and Wim Hof emerged. And that was the first time. And I, I thought, that is amazing. I believe that's a skill I can learn. Now, after that, what ended up happening is a year later or two years later, I read an article. I think it was 2014 or 2015. I read an article and it was an article about you basically being injected with endotoxins, which is the components of bacterial cell walls. And you didn't react. Your immune, your immune system didn't respond as in it wasn't it wasn't hyperactive. It just you did not have any of any symptoms. And it was just fascinating to me. And everybody was was basically mentioning that, oh, it's probably you just have a genetic uh, immunity to it in some way or form. And you said, no, anyone can learn how to do this. And this really got my attention. And since then, I started exploring it because you brought 12 individuals a few weeks later or a few months later, I'm not sure, but you brought them back to the same institute. They were all injected. None of them got sick. None of them developed any symptoms because the breathing technique allowed them to control their immune system. And this is by far something that is groundbreaking, one of the most groundbreaking things in medical history to be able to control your nervous system slash immune system. And something for people to understand is that the immune system is connected to everything. When you, when you think of inflammation, that's the immune system. When you think of autoimmunity, the immune system attacking the body, that's the immune system. When you think of immunodeficiency, deficiency in the immune system or weakness in the immune system, allergies, hyperactivity of the immune system, hypersensitivity, cancer. When you look at infection, it's about the immune system. Where we are living right now, and we're going to start talking about this because this is really important. There is a triad when it comes to the immune system. When it comes to health, you have the virus, the virulence of the virus, the intensity of it. The second component is the exposure to the virus. And then the third is the actual immunity, the immune system. The strength of the immune system of the individual can actually trump the existence of the virus or the strength of the virus. We can't control the strength of the virus but we can control to a degree the exposure, but what we can control a lot more is the immune system. And this is where Wim Hof came in. And in 2015, I purchased your online course and I left it for a few months. Then I got, probably a few months later, I developed very intense, very severe flu-like symptoms, nausea, headaches, my, my pain, my just body aches and pains, runny nose, 
cough, nasal congestion, fever. And I was so, so, so like I, for seven days, I've been trying to recover. I've been trying to enhance my health. Nothing was working. Then I remembered the online course, the 10 week online course that Wim Hof has had that I've purchased. And I said, this is a perfect opportunity for me to try this. So I watched the first video. I don't know if I told you this one, but I watched the first video. And the first video showed me the, the way you breathe, and it's three rounds. After the three rounds, there was the, the yoga stretching exercises with breathing. At the end of the 25 minutes, as far as I remember, they were 25 minutes, I felt better for the first time in over seven days. A bit better, not a lot. So I walked around after that, 10, 15 minutes, I was doing some paperwork and I got that done. And suddenly, in a, in, suddenly, I just felt it in my body. I felt this cooling sensation in my chest that I've never felt in my life. And this whole thing happened within five seconds. After 15 minutes of stopping, and I felt a bit better, after 15 minutes, I felt that cooling sensation in my chest for the first time in my life. And I felt that it was just shrinking and going all the way down to my gut, and it vanished. It was five seconds. This whole experience was five seconds. What was miraculous is after the five seconds were done, my every single symptom that I just told you was gone. In five seconds, I suddenly no longer have nasal congestion, no longer have runny nose, a runny nose, no longer have anything. And it just blew my mind that in five seconds, I switched from having nausea, headache to nothing, from having nasal congestion to nothing, from having a runny nose to nothing, cough, pain, gone. Now, obviously to me, it wasn't five seconds because when people get sick, it takes time. The body goes into that state. And it takes time for you to feel the symptoms. So something starts happening and something is set in motion. And what ended up happening, I believe, is the moment I started 45 minutes before that, when I started watching your video and I started doing the breathing, something was activated and a cascade took place. And at the end of the 45 minutes, all it took was five seconds for everything to switch, for everything to disappear. And it blew my mind. And since then, I became a Wim Hofer. Uh, to me, Wim Hof is a verb, not a, not a name. It is Wim Hofing. Uh, and now it's just Wimming. So I tell people I Wimmed four times or I Wimmed three times. And I think at some point, Merriam-Webster Dictionary or whatever dictionary is going to definitely catch on that. Wim is going to be a verb from now on. Start Wimming people. And if you don't know what the Wim Hof method is, this is exactly why we're here. So... Wim, it is an absolute honor to talk to you and to connect with you right now. I just wanted to share this introduction. Side note for anybody that is joining from Wim, from Wim Hof's page that doesn't know who I am. My name is Sam Karashi. I used to be a psychiatric resident, moved away from my practice to find a better way. I believe in education over medication. I believe in prevention over treatment. I believe that we have the answer. I believe that the problem is in gene expression, not in the gene. And we have control over that by changing the external stimulation that is coming our way. So in the same way that something was kicked in, somebody developed depression, somebody developed any emotional problem, whatever the problem may be, any mental illness, it's because of an external stimulation that led to a gene expression. So my question is, what can we do internally to stimulate ourselves to maybe reverse that? What can we do externally through our environment, the people we know, how we interact with the world to change that. This became a mission for me. And I started interviewing experts around the world who I like to call unorthodox psychologists, including a samurai in Japan, um, the top pickpocket in the UK, who during the interview first, in the, during the first five minutes, stole my phone three times. That's a topic for another day. Um, the top cold reader in the world who can convince anyone he's psychic. The horse whisperer who can connect with horses through eye contact and body language and get them to move and so forth. And Wim Hof is another jigsaw puzzle piece in the jigsaw puzzle of the mind that I've been exploring. And here we are. Wim. So wow. <laughs> That's an introduction that relieves me of introducing. Amazing. <laughs> you just relieve me. So much, uh, you know, where I have to tell my story and get into it and all, but you took it away. 
You took it away. Yeah. Uh, uh, and what, uh, uh, the thing is about what you uh, told, which you uh, never told to me that story, the, the five seconds, the five seconds when it happens is that uh, because you read into it, your mind got into it. And you are already a practitioner who is curious about natural ways how to tap into the depth of yourself. I mean, it is yourself you're talking about. And we have all the birthright to tap into the depth of ourselves. Only we lost the ability. So, and, and then we lost the proof. And then we got into a system that is, yes, full of psychiatrists, psychologists, uh, pills, medicaments, uh, treatments, uh, hos hospital bills, and all that dependency. Dependency on what? When we are able to tap in by the law of nature and our birthright into the depths of ourselves. Yes. So you began to read into it and you tapped in right there with your mind into the depths. And then in the end, conclusive, conclusively, in five seconds, it was done. You know what happened? In five seconds, the specific immune system got activated. That is the Sherlock Holmes within, within us in the bone marrow. Normally, it takes five to six, seven days in a flu, a strong flu or virus infection or bacterial infection for the specific immune system to, uh, to get it. To, uh, to, to come in, to be activated. Only now, because we connect into the depth of ourselves with our mind and with our, our breath, we activate the, uh, the cells in the marrow, the T cells and the B cells. And they are the specific part of the specific immune system. And with that, we can, create, uh, we can battle any inflammation at the core at the beginning and that creates confidence that creates a psychological difference within yourself you are suddenly able to expose yourself to so much more danger so-called danger because you control the specific immune system which is able through neurotransmitters to uh, activate anything that is necessary to oppose the external stress, uh, uh, the external stress with an uh, adequate uh, response of the hormonal system. Could be adrenaline, could be dopamine, serotonin, could be opioids, could be uh, uh, cannabinoids, it doesn't matter. The, the whole pharmacy is inside. And we, when we connect, and now we have shown in the signs, in the brain scans, like cold water, ice cold water upon the skin, just by the use of the power of my intention, thoughts, no movement. The skin temperature did not go down, which is an external stressor, just by thinking. And that is the natural connection between the neurotransmitters, which is electricity, potentials, neural activity, together with the hormonal system. Once that connection happens, then you become a yogi uh, of the past into the deep. And you are able to do things uh, thought of impossible. And I tell you, now it's here. And it's here for everybody in the world to learn how to battle inflammation with adrenaline, epinephrine, with dopamine, serotonin, depression, uh, the debalance of dopamine, serotonin. You can handle that. You can handle, learn to handle your mood. You can learn to handle inflammation which is actually cause and effect of any disease coming from external stresses on the body. Coming in could also be orally, like uh, bacteria and virus. It always comes from the outside in and deregulates our system, creating dis-ease. Not being at ease, but dis-ease. 
And then we should be able to connect inside and uh, regulate the out of balance uh, situations. And this is what we have found. We found it together with scientists and researchers and psychiatrists now. They, they say a transformational technique that will change health, mental health care. Is what they say. Another professor is saying, uh, uh, we have to congratulate our colleagues in Nijmegen and Radboud University on the results because they found the answer uh, for at least 95% on all autoimmune diseases. And then the enigma on uh, uh, cancer, uh, uh, as if we are uh, like uh, powerless against that. Our inner nature knows only we need to connect. And that connection is within us. It's not only belief anymore. They say Professor Music from Detroit, Wayne State University states in a new book of Scott Carney, which is an investigative journalist to debunk me. He states, Wim Hof has found the secret of placebo. Placebo is no longer something out there. It is the power of our mind now in control of our will. It has been shown in brain scans. So we bring this now. You talk about uh, uh, psychiatry, like prevention, better than, uh, uh, than letting things go and uh, uh, the mind over mats, mats and, and things like that. And I, I think we got it. We got them, and we got it both, and we recognized. And then in the end, we just want to share the birthright to control our mood to be happy and strong and healthy and how to battle and prevent inflammation to come in our lives, uh, deregulating our uh, uh, being, taking away our confidence, increasing our dependence, and all that. So... There we are. Thank you for the introduction. But here we are in this discussion, in this conversation, to get into the unknown. Whatever question comes, yeah. we, we see it coming and we make something beautiful out of it. Because life exactly. is beautiful. Exactly. Well, this brings me to a question that I wanted to ask you about. Because at the beginning of the book... That, by the way, for everybody, uh, Wim Hof just launched is the book, The Wim Hof Method, on the 25th of September in the UK, and it's going to be worldwide, I guess, launched on the 20th of October. Is that correct? The 20th yes. of October. Yes. yes. Two days from now. You can pre-order it on Amazon. You can pre-order it. It is an incredible book. I'm still diving into it. I'm still going through it back and forth. Uh, the one thing, and this is interesting because... I've studied your work for over five years, so it's amazing. There are stories that I didn't even know about you, and it was just fascinating to, to explore. So thank you for sharing it. Your yeah. spirit, your soul, the way you communicate, your, your, the way you perceive the world is... I can, I can see and hear your voice in the book. Like It's, it's, it's so beautiful to just go through that. And uh, one question that came to mind at the beginning, you talked about hermetic, the, the hermetic... Um, or hermesis, stress. hermetic stress, yeah, yeah. which is kind of to me like emotional vaccination in a way. It's it's pushing emotional and physical, where there's a bit of stress that beta is being triggered that we're triggered by that makes us stronger and makes us adapt to, instead of having an overwhelming amount. So my question to you is, and this is a general thing. This is about. Yeah, this is about that, but it's about a lot of other things because it ties into the idea of also to me medication is a biochemical crutch. It helps, but it doesn't solve the real problem behind the mental illness. So there are physiological crutches, environmental crutches. So here's my question to you. Um, what have we done to weaken ourselves physically and emotionally throughout the last hundred years? What do you see that we have done that we allowed the environment or ourselves in any way or form to weaken ourselves? What have we done to do that? Yes, we have followed our mind, our thinking brain. And our thinking brain has come up with technology. Our thinking brain has come up with great extension tools. Air conditioning, warming, cars, 
technology that it, it all brings us uh, to a choice to uh, to be used for our comfort and that uh, is a it is an extension of our thoughts okay. so that is great technology is great but a uh, technology is an extension of our thoughts and it is comforting our thought processes our thinking brain but not the deeper brain the deeper brain is the limbic system which is the social the mammalian the mammal the feeling the feeling of cold the feeling of heat the feeling of love the feeling of stress the feeling of danger with that uh, i mean and uh, all these things we uh, we think too much and then the blood flow doesn't descend in the deeper parts of our brain and then uh, we go even deeper into the brain stem because we have got all these extension tools our world is kind of safe there is no danger anymore and the brain stem is all about fight and flight it's a, 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 but not only it's also about trauma it's also about a uh, purpose of life it's also about how to kill the pain naturally it's also about uh, happiness sheer pure happiness that is the depth of the brain stem and that we have deprived the blood flow through our thinking brain especially the last 100 years being following our thoughts and our thoughts is neurology neural activity then the blood flow goes over there all the time it means that 25% less blood flow is in the rest of the brain that means that those parts of the brain get on a stand by they are not flourishing and thus we look for the purpose of life yeah it's not alive inside in the brain stem we uh, we look for love and being together uh, and sharing and all but the world is full of depression of wars of uh, t- attention conflicts and all because we don't know how to solve because it is not alive we don't see it we become insensitive so the last 100 years we have gotten and created a comfort zone behavior by our thoughts Okay. and that has deprived the right blood pressure in our brain a deeper part of our brain which then is on standby and not flourishing it is we have narrowed down our consciousness and we don't know and now we get in here and we are because i've been saying this a long time but nobody's listening so then i went through the signs and then i showed how to battle after 16000 people c- becoming sick after an injection of a uh, e coli bacteria i come in i do not become sick and then i instruct 12 people within a couple of days they don't become sick after 16000 people all becoming sick and then i go to brain scans and i show how to tap into the brain stem consciously at will because we lost it and how did i retrieve it by going so much into the cold i learned to go into the stress mechanisms of my own brain and to connect neurologically so when you go and do that then for the rest of the day any stressor can come you activate the stress mechanisms to be on the alert and then the stress can come in could be viral emotional mental bacterial biological what environmental it doesn't matter stress is stress is cell biological stress in the end and the stress mechanisms in conscious control are able to activate into the cell mm. and uh, and defy the stress coming in and this is uh, this is one we already showed now in december we get new results 
from the DNA researchers, top researchers in, in the US, in San Francisco. So then there will be absolutely no doubt anymore uh, whatsoever the doubt was uh, that we are able to even tap into the gene expressions, into the DNA, into the telomeres, the length of life span, the quality of life, which is the gene expressions, how to invigorate the natural condition of the gene expression in general, how to do that, and then the cell, protection of the cell through the activation of cold shock proteins. I mean, you go into the cold, you go into stress. And what happens, then the proteins around the cell, they are activated and they block inflammation coming into the cell and oxidative stress. With that, we become the alchemists uh, and we become strong. We become in the ability to regulate our own mood and we get, are able to stop and prevent inflammation from coming in. There we are. Wow. Please. Wow. Um, so a couple of points that came to mind when you were talking about this. One, I remembered what you mentioned about previously about the idea that people um, have been focusing on comforting themselves so much. So comfort in a way basically deprives us of our own evolution. It deprives us of our adaptation. It, 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 it deprives us of thriving. And the other thing is the idea of the, the, when I was mentioning the biochemical crutch in medication, the physiological crutch is, I guess, heat in a way. When you heat up the room with heaters, artificial heaters that came from us um, through our thoughts, things are, I love things are extensions or our technology are extensions of our thought. I love that. And what happens is by comforting ourselves through heat, we prevent our bodies from adapting to the cold. Because like you said, when you expose yourself to the cold, it, it allows us to basically desensitize ourselves to unnecessary stress. So we become stronger. It actually, in a way, creates thicker skin. It creates, it enhances mental toughness, not just physical toughness. Oh, not yeah. only... Yeah, and, and obviously something that any anyone who's familiar with the Wim Hof would understand that the cold is also a great exercise for the vascular system, as in the, the veins, the, the, the vessels are constantly uh, constricting and dilating, and it, it becomes more, it becomes healthier. You are enhancing your cardiovascular system, the health of your cardiovascular system, by doing the cold exposure. I do have... A question about stress. I, there's so many places I want to go with you now and in terms of different directions. But one thing that um, if we were to just simplify good stress versus bad stress through the lens of Wim Hof, what do you yeah. think? Because, because there is bad stress. There is good stress. There is stress that affects us and there's in a bad way. There's stress that affects us in a good way. So this is really simplistic language. But if we were to simplify it, what's good stress and what's bad stress to Wim Hof? Good stress is uh, a conscious, uh, a conscious going into a stressful situation and uh, thus activating consciously your uh, stress mechanisms in your, inside your own brain. It's also good for the body, but it, uh, I'm talking the brain now. And uh, inside your own brain, you have these stress mechanisms and we are able to connect with them. That is good stress. Now, then you have bad stress uh, 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 in daily life, which is constantly c coming to us. Uh, uh, and we are not able to deal with it uh, at a certain moment. And this is the underlying problem. Uh, uh, stress becomes bad when the body is not able to adapt to it anymore. And this is... Uh, uh, part of the vascular system, which you uh, just mentioned. Uh, the vascular system is about 100,000 kilometers, 70,000 miles inside of us, mm -hmm. capillaries, arteries, and veins. Yeah. They contain millions of little muscles. If you go into stressful uh, uh, situations like the cold, you train these uh, millions of little muscles, and they uh, then help the blood flow go through the body a lot better. Uh, 
That means it reaches the cell, uh, 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 the cell with nutrients, vitamins, uh, and oxygen a lot better. And here it comes. Then the heart rate goes down 20 to 30 beats a minute, 24 hours a day. And there you have the chronic stress because it, uh, when the condition of the vascular system is weakened, mm -hmm. then the heart needs to compensate for the loss of blood pressure because the millions of little muscles are not helping the right way. So the blood flow needs to go through anyway. So the reaction of the heart is beat more, 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 more. But at the same time, that reaction is uh, uh, sending a signal to the liver to, uh, uh, to activate glucose and to activate cortisol. And because it, our vascular system is constantly in deficit, uh, uh, creating a deficit for the heart to pump more, 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 because we have to perform outside all the time, uh, 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 then there is no moment of relief anymore, no moment of repair, no moment of restoration, because an accelerated heart rate is directly connected to the uh, sympathetic nervous system, adrenaline, cortisol, cortisol. So we live in a constant presence of cortisol, and no more uh, is the cortisol not present, and uh, therefore, at a certain moment, there is no uh, parasympathetic nervous system activity, which yes. comes when the cortisol goes away. Parasympathetic comes to repair, restore, create new energy. It's not there anymore. And logically, we get all these autoimmune diseases. We get, uh, 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 how do you say, uh, burnouts. We don't, uh, we are tired. We become sleepless and all these nasty things happen and they are very easy to get rid of taking a cold shower a day keeps the doctor away yes. as simple as it is and that, uh, 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 that that simplicity should uh, the, the gravity of that simplicity the gravity of that exercise should be known throughout the world the vascular system is present within everybody of us, 100,000 kilometers. That is the, the inner vascular fitness exercising should be there. And not only the uh, look, how I look, big muscles and fitness rooms and this and that. Your inner power, your inner life is waiting for you for external uh, stimulation environmental stimulation. With that comes the brainstem. With that comes the limbic system in the brain with sufficient blood flow, fully alive. And then you will have no problems to know who you are, what you are here for, and what you're going to do because you are alive. And you feel, when you are alive, you feel happy. When you feel happy, you don't build up any frustration or anything. You radiate great energy for everybody because we are connected all. And that, that, that is the simple truth. And with that comes the other one, the, the breathing. If the breathing, what, what do you do when you go into the cold? <clears throat> you breathe deep. You come to life. And you are the alchemist. And with that, if you're regulated, you are able to manipulate and, uh, 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 and bring back the balance of whatever is blocked within your body, neurally, through the uh, fluid, uh, through the lymphatic system. And it is so simple all. And we got to understand that we are not built to be complicated in our thinking brain, but being. That is simply being there is great. And that is a, blood, a matter of the blood flow. And it is so simple to get there. Uh, everybody is able to do that. We could do an exercise right now and, and, and have people experience. Yes. Okay. 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 I want to hear this. How many people want to actually do a breathing exercise right now? with me and Wim. Wim guiding us all to do this. Yes, yes, yes. So everybody that wants to do it, say yes. 
Come on. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. 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 All right. A few more. You're seeing it, right? Yeah. You're seeing that whim. Okay. Okay. Let's let's do this. I'm okay. So we're gonna do one round. Yes. Okay. I got I, I got one. I got a suggestion. We do one round of breathing. Okay. And astound everybody being able in round number one to stay 90 seconds with no breathing after an exhalation. That is excellent. That is excellent. Then, number two, we got to do 30 breaths afterwards. And then everybody goes into push up position. And in the breath hold, does more push-ups than he is able to ever done. And that's okay, now, so, like today. Okay, okay are you, so... Are, are, guys, are you up to this? The two rounds. Round one is just breathing. Round two is doing push-ups at the end of it. Immediately. Okay, okay. Do you got... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Good. Yes. There we go. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. Just to be clear, so, so that can, the steps can be clear for anybody that doesn't understand, and please correct me if I'm wrong, Wim. Yes. So we're going to be doing in and out breathing. You're going to guide us through it. And then at the end, we're going to take a deep breath in and then exhale and then hold our breath on an exhale for 90 seconds. 90 then, seconds. Yeah, are you, gonna, you can are you, do it. <laughs> are you gonna, are you, you become the alchemist. Yes. Are you going to... That's are the you, way we are built. Are you going to time us? Or do you want me yes. to time Or you're going to time us? We, we, uh, we need a timer. I don't have a timer here because I'm here looking at the telephone. Okay. Okay. So when we go into the exhale, on a, hold our breath on an exhale, I will time it. Okay? Good. I'm wow. going to use the timer. I'm going to use wow. the... Hold on. Let me time wow. it. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> okay. Yeah, man. So I'm oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. So we're gonna do. Are you this. ready? Gonna... What? Ready. Just, just one last, just one last question for me as well to understand. So as soon as we finish the ninety seconds, we take a deep breath in and hold it for for how long? Would you want fifteen seconds or? Fifteen. Fifteen. Uh, I will guide. Okay, and yeah. then immediately after that, after yes. we we release. We will have. We will go through another round, yes. and then at the end, do you want us to do the push-ups by holding our breath on an inhale or an on exhale? An inhale. Inhale. Yep. So okay, round two, we do thirty breaths, and then we take a deep breath in and hold it, and then we do as many push-ups as we can. That's it. Then, then we let it out. Done. Yes. Done. Okay. Right. I'm ready. I'm ready. Effort. Oh, just just one thing. Just one thing to clarify. Everybody, right now that is that is watching to do this breathing, if Please don't be in a bathtub. Please don't be taking a shower. Please don't be driving. Please don't be swimming. Sit on a couch. If you're in driving, park the car in a safe place and just stop and focus on this. This is really important for you not to be, for your own safety to not, you to not operate any machinery. Just relax and focus on this. That's all. Uh, just for safety measures for everybody, focus on this. Sit. Don't stand. Please be sitting or lying down while doing this. I'm going to be sitting, and we will begin right now. Right up. So fully in means your belly, chest, fully in, like. And you let it go. Also go through the nose. Let it go. Fully in. Let it go. Fully in, letting go. Fully in, letting go. Fully in, letting go. Keep on going. You become lightheaded. Loom in the body is all all right. Breathe into it, letting go. Fully in, letting go. Fully in, letting go. Twenty more. 
Count up. Pull it in. Let it go. 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 Pull it in. Light-headed loom in the body. Okay, breathe into it. Pull it in. Let it go. 14 more. Pull it in. Let it go. Pull it in. Let it go. 12. Pull it in. Let it go. 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 Seven. Pull it in. Let it go. Six. Pull it in. Let it go. Five. Pull it in. Let it go. Four. <coughs> Pull it in. Let it go. Pull it in. Let it go. Pull it in. Let it go. Here comes the last one. <coughs> Timing. Pull it in. Let it go. And stop. No breathing. <coughs> Just witness the <coughs> breathing is not necessary. Carbon dioxide trigger has been blown out. Alka alkalinity in the body is very high. There's no need for breathing. pH levels are just great. Now, because you're not breathing, you're feeling okay. Witnessing your adrenal axis is being activated right in your brain. Hypothalamus, pituitary glands, adrenal glands, fully awake, resetting your body. You're going right. We're getting to a minute. We're going past. All right. 25 seconds more. Getting there. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Five, four, three, two, one. Pull it in. Hold. Squeeze it all to your head. Cerebrospinal fluid to the midbrain. And let it go. <sighs> Correct. Well done. Following up. Fully in. Let it go. Fully in. Let it go. Fully in. Let it go. Pull it 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 in. Let it go. Down, down. 19 more. Pull it in. Let it go. 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 Pull it in. 
Let it go. 13. Pull it in. Let it go. 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 Nine. Pull it in. Let it go. Eight. Pull it in. Let it go. Seven. Pull it in. Let it go. It's one thing on your mind. You give the best and you will get the best. Follow my instructions. Four more. Number three. Let it go. Number two. Let it go. Number one. Let it go. And now fully in. Hold, and now do your push-ups. Go for it. Go for it. Don't think. Do. Don't think. Do. Just do. 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 Do more than you normally can, because you change the biochemistry inside, and you can do more than you normally can do, even without breathing, because you are the alchemist. And with that comes a new power from the inside to be used, to learn, to regulate your mood, and to stop inflammation. Well done. <laughs> well done. Now, I'm asking, guys, how many... Did you do more than normal? Be honest. Did you do more than normal? Fucking bull. Yeah. Yes. That's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> yes. Wow. You got it, guys. <clears throat> well done. <clears throat> 31, man. 38. That's amazing. 17. I did 30 and I stopped. Um, but yeah, I just... <laughs> Yeah, this I, I haven't been doing push-ups for a very long time, so I did 30. But 30 with your breath, holding your breath on an inhale is amazing. Um, <laughs> everybody, it doesn't matter how many. Here's the thing for everybody that is watching. It doesn't matter how many push-ups you have done. The fact of the matter is this exercise boosts it. I remember there's, a, there's, there's something that you, you – and I think the second week of the 10-week online course, you ask everybody to do push-ups – as many as they can, and then you do the Wim Hof cycle. I think you do three, and then the fourth one, you ask them to do push-ups again. When I did the first time, I don't remember how many, <coughs> I doubled. And what's interesting is after you push yourself to failure, whatever, whatever, whatever push-ups, however many push-ups you do after that, whatever rounds or reps you do is going to be less. So if I did 30 the first time and I'm exhausted... You asked me to do it again, I'm going to do 20, maybe 15. But what you did with that exercise um, in the video is I did, I, I think maybe I did 20 or something, then I ended up doing 40, even though 20 was the most, the maximum for me at the time. I don't remember how many, but that was amazing because what it does is it proves that you can turn on your nervous system in so many different ways. And in the book, you talk about techniques, breathing techniques for endurance, breathing techniques for mood regulation, for stress regulation, for pain regulation, um, and for energy. Something I noticed after doing push-ups, usually what I do is um, a 30-second push-up. So I do seven push-ups and that's it, but the seven push-ups are 30 seconds, like a 10 seconds to go down, 10 seconds to hold it, and 10 seconds to go up. It's very, very intense. And usually I kind of tremble and shake after doing the seven push-ups. It takes me a few hours to recover. I tried the Wim Hof method. I tried the breathing. I did two rounds right after doing the seven push-ups, the 30-second push-up. And after the two rounds, I no longer had lactic acid buildup in my muscles. I no longer had the tremors. I no longer felt weak. 
it's like I didn't even do the push-ups. It's amazing to do the Wim Hof to boost your energy before doing a workout, but it's also amazing to do it after. This is my personal experience doing it after. So, wow. Everybody's enjoying it. And like I said, it doesn't matter how many reps you have done, how many times, how many push-ups you've done. It's just incredible. But how did people feel? And I've been seeing people. Someone said, I'm high. Someone said, I'm enjoying This is amazing. The thing is, all you did was breathe. You didn't take a pill. You didn't take anything. You were just breathing. And this is the power of how we can breathe to tap into our nervous system, our immune system, to strengthen our immune system, especially during these times. The Wim Hof method was super valuable for a lot of people that I recommended it to since the start of the pandemic. It was super powerful. And I've personally used it. My mom is using it. Um, it she's, I'm, I'm doing, I'm, <laughs> I'm using, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm using the, M, the, uh, the app, the app. Everybody, if you go on the app store and check out Wim Hof method, that is a free app that has a choice. There's a, there's a, a section called guided breathing bubble where you click on it and you just follow the breathing and you do as many rounds as you want, at least three. I do it. I do it separately. Then I, I do it for my mom every day and she feels great. Mashallah tabarakallah. Alhamdulillah. She feels, she feels great that whenever she does it, her energy levels, her mood, it's, it's just incredible. <laughs> and this, is something, <laughs> and this yeah. is something, yeah, this is something every family, every family around the world, can use it. I think every household needs that app. And I highly recommend you check it out. So um, there's, there's so much we could talk about. One thing I would want to ask, actually, this is a question that I thought of before, but I forgot, but now it just came up. What's the difference between doing push-ups while holding your breath, holding a, doing a breath hold on an inhale versus doing push-ups with a breath hold on an exhale? Because I think um, doing push-ups, breath hold, doing push-ups while having a, doing the breath hold on an exhale allows me to do it even more. Because when you're holding breath in, you know, I'm sure a lot of people felt the pressure, right? But what's the difference? Like, yes. what's the benefit based on your understanding? The absolute benefit of a, a breath hold on the inhale Yes. And then doing the push-ups is that people with, power exam, with any uh, type of inflammation will turn the inflammation down. Okay. It is very good against inflammation. And that is not so much with the exhale. I see. So, because we only did one round and, and, and I thought, okay, let's do it on the inhale. But... <clears throat> Try it on the exhale as well, because you well explained it. Even then, you have less inhibition, physical inhibition. You don't feel pressure. You just feel I can keep on. What is this? We are making the muscle tissue alkaline. That is what we have shown. And the last study we have published was on the Cori cycle. The, that means the Cori cycle is that what creates. Uh, what makes lactate going back into uh, glucose. And this breathing is able to make uh, the lactate go back into glucose again. And that's why when you recover, when you recover, you want the lactose to become glucose again, uh, usable instead of blocking. That is chemistry that is usable again for performance. And uh, before you go in, uh, uh, to, into performance, you better do the breathing because you create alkalinity in the body, in the muscle uh, tissue, in the deep, in the depth of the lymphatic system. And in the lymphatic system is being exerted uh, and when you want you go into the performance deeper and deeper and deeper, then you create a deficit and then lactate comes now it doesn't come because you cleansed the lymphatic system. So in the end, we can be uh, complicated and difficult about it because it's all new science and it has been proven. But in the end, it is uh, the old known uh, breathe, motherfucker. So I'm going to, uh, for everybody that was asking, 
I'm going to, people were asking what the name of the app is and there are people that are answering and I appreciate that. What I'm going to do at the end, um, hopefully I can save this video and I'll post it on my IGTV. And I guess you can save it too, Wim, if I'm not mistaken. Both parties can save it. I will post in the story the name of the app and pictures of it. I will post the name of the, I'll post the website for, for Wim Hof as well and a photo of the book, which I have mentioned previously. And I'm going to actually do that again uh, and I'm going to share it as well. So I'm going to touch upon the app, the book, the website in my story if you missed anything right now. And you can easily go back to the IG, this IGTV or this video on IGTV, hopefully. It's going to be available at least for a time, for, for some time, and, and enjoy that. So this is for people that were responding. And someone was saying something about, uh, I didn't catch the name. Someone was talking about the, um, yeah, their face felt a lot of pressure. Yeah, everybody did because you're holding the breath. So when I finished, I had to wait for a few seconds so I don't sit with a red face. I needed to wait a bit before doing that. But it shifts. There is a shift that happens and, and you, can, you can feel it in your body, not just through the breathing, but through the breathing and the workout itself through the push-ups. So, so thank you so much, uh, Wim, for that. There's, ah, uh, do you have, do you have, uh, yeah, would you like to go a bit deeper? Yes, anytime. Any, uh, okay. The thing about the psych, the psychological point of this podcast yes. is that you will create absolute confidence. You will be able to tap into the depth of your own physiology deeper than uh, science thought was possible. And we, I have come from a nature uh, with techniques that uh, prove fundamentally the, the science, the medical science to change. Because nature built us to be stronger than we are, resulted uh, through our comfort zone behavior. We are stronger. We are here to be connected to be able to prevent from disease, to prevent from a depression, to feel great like a happy, strong and healthy every day when we want to. Because we are the masters of our mind and the captains of our soul. And we should be able to experience that fully. With that comes the psychological point of confidence. It will be restored within you. Just do this and it'll come because it is nature. It is only that you open up to nature, that nature in flu full splendor is able to realize and manifest within you. You are a flower, all of you. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, I, there's, there's some, okay, so there are a few things that I would love to touch upon in terms of the experience itself. So one thing that was mentioned is the competition. Um, I remember when we did, when I did the Wim Hof in the 10 week online course, you were looking at every, all of your students on the right side, and you were basically telling them, everybody was saying how, how much, how long they held their breath on an exhale. But then you looked into the camera and you said, this is not a competition. The idea is not about, because your physiology has nothing to do with their physiology. And the whole thing is not about connecting. Um, it's not about competing. And it got me thinking, because at the end of the day, I feel that when we compete with others, we in a way disconnect from ourselves. And with that exercise, you're trying to compete and try to hold your breath longer to, to beat someone you're missing the point of the entire exercise. It's not about competition. It's about connection. And whenever you compete with someone, it's harder to connect with them because you create a rivalry. It's hard to connect with others when, you're, when you have a competitive mentality against them. Now, there's a place for competition in business, in sports. But when you have a competitive mentality, when you're sitting with another human being, kind of like what you and I are doing right now, a competitive mentality is not going to help us to achieve epiphanies and, and, and discover things during this conversation and, and learn more. And um, I would be blocking myself by competing with you. If, if I'm competing, I'm already creating a block that is preventing me from learning. And I think this is something really important for people to understand. 
drop the competitive mentality when you are communicating with any human being. And it doesn't matter if you know more than the other person or you know less. Competition doesn't have a place there if you want to learn, if you want to create flow. And especially when you're doing something with yourself, it's about connection, not competition. And I just wanted to point that out. But the other thing you mentioned in that video that I'd like to ask you about is the force. I remember you said, you always say no force, no force, no force. And I just, before, I have a couple of things to mention and to say about that, but I want to hear your thoughts on no force. When you keep on asking people, just don't force it. Just, just don't force it. What are you, what exactly do you mean? And why do you always focus on do not force? Intuition and gut feeling. They come like epiphanies. They come effort, uh, effortlessly, without force. Those are, that, that is natural wisdom. It always comes and it shows you. It is the guide. And it is done by feeling. Let the feeling go. The feeling is the guide. Don't push the guide. The guide mm -hmm. wants to show you the depth of yourself. To open up to the depth of yourself of you and anything that is uh, hidden within our DNA. Could be ancestral DNA, could be ancestral genetical encrypted codes, trauma, uh, 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 things that are blocked in the depth. They don't come by force, they come by letting go. Well, once you learn how to follow your feeling, the breath, and follow your breath with your consciousness. Your consciousness is electricity. Your consciousness is neurotransmitters. It's a will. It's conscious perception. It's perception that goes with the breath. If you force it, then, the, then your consciousness is not able to enter into the old trauma, into the, uh, into the blockages. It is mere neurology what is going on it's very fine and not hard it's not forceful it's very subtle and with that subtlety you learn to control the physical mechanisms all over the body and the brain the seat of the mind through subtlety so forcing really it does not work in the depths of the dna it doesn't penetrate into the cell. It doesn't go in our genes. It is only damaging. It's chronic, like chronic stress. And we have to learn to let go and find our ways within us without force. Because it's already naturally there. How it exactly works, the, uh, the DNA researchers are into that right now what i've learned i've learned through intuition and gut feeling and that got me to change science fundamentally just following the breathing yeah in the beginning they said hey you are crazy just following the breathing i'm breathing all day already so i don't need to do all these things okay 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 and then I showed in science, uh, scientific comparative study how to defy the bacteria injected inside by controlling the immune system more than thought possible in medical history and science. And it is every time, just follow your breath. You are not the enemy of yourself. Don't compete with yourself. If you want to be the best of yourself, let it go. And it'll come. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. The idea is force pre prevents flow. People that want flow, the moment you force something, you are stepping in the way. I remember when I was training with the samurai in Japan, every time I tensed my body, I lost my balance. I lost my control. I lost my strength. Whenever I tensed up, it was easy for him to push me. The more I relaxed, the more grounded I was, the more stable I was, the more in control I was, because the more flow I had, the more flexible I was. Tension creates the rigidity, which makes it easy for me to fall. 
And it was so interesting to have that experience. Um, in terms of in terms of force as well, I was also thinking of this is I don't think this I don't think I ever had we ever had this conversation about about the ice bath and the idea of force. In 2017, probably five months before we met in Spain, uh, I trained with the Horse Whisperer to learn horse psychology and communication with horses. And one of the things I learned from Kelly Marks um, and Monty Roberts, but at the time it was Kelly Marks for the most of the days, is that when a horse panics in a pen or in, a, in an arena, you don't take the horse out until it calms down. Because if you take the horse out when it's still panicking, it will take the fear with it and the fear will remain with it. It will be so much harder to release the fear from the horse. And I never made that connection until after I did the ice bath with you um, in the seven days, the ice bath sessions that we all did. But after that, I was connecting that and I realized because I, I kind of vaguely remember you mentioning or someone mentioning don't leave if you're uncomfortable because the idea is when you stay in the ice and that connects it to the, to the horse, the idea of the horse. If I have a fear of the ice bath, the experience, the cold exposure, and I'm panicking and I leave, I'm taking the panic with me. I'm taking the fear with me. So the fast, the best thing I can do is step back. But if I stay long enough for me to relax and then I walk out I am no longer forced to leave. There's because the fear we have is what forces us to leave. There's that force. And there would be no force, no tension. There will only be choice in that moment. I will no longer have a need to leave because whenever there's a fear, there's a need. Whenever there's fear, there's force. But if I stay in the, in the ice bath long enough, the fear would disappear. The force would disappear. The need would disappear. And all I have remaining is choice. So I step out. So I think if we are forced, if we allow ourselves to force or we feel other things or allow other things or other people to force us, we are depriving ourselves of flow. We are also de depriving ourselves of choice because I don't think we can have choice in the absence of flow. I don't think you can have choice if there is no flow. You're panicking. And it's really in stress is the resistance if I'm resistant, I'm creating tension. Creating tension, there's rigidity, there's blockage. I feel trapped psychologically. Now I feel, I feel the fear of death because I feel the fear of, of not, able to, not being able to escape. And therefore, what ends up happening is stress emerges. Stress to me is the perceived absence of safety. And how can we feel safe when we no longer have choice, when we no longer have flow, when when we are resistant, it's the resistance that keeps us trapped. And an example of that is the monkey trap. When they carve out the coconut, they plant, they, they, they bury it in the ground, they put a treat, the monkey goes, goes in, it's big enough for the hand to go in, but it's not big enough for the fist to go out. So the monkey is trapped, panics, and sees the hunters coming. The, 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 hunt, the, the, the monkey just keeps on tensing up even further, preventing himself from escaping because resistance is what keeps us trapped. Acceptance is what sets us free. So there's a lot that ties into acceptance and flow and choice and force. And I just thought it was really interesting for us to kind of touch upon that for people. Hopefully that was helpful in some way or form. And this was something I, I really wanted to share uh, because it was linked to the ice bath and the horse. And, and I wanted to share that with you for a long time. Um, amazing. Amazing. I yes. Mean, my, my life is all about uh, losing the fear. Yes. Not, Perfect. Not, not, uh, not, not losing the alertness to danger, but losing the fear. With the fear comes in inhibition. You do less than you would be able to do and express yourself in life and flourish and flow. And that, uh, that's where we get in uh, to where with our fear-based uh, way of thinking, the regulations, you cannot do this, you cannot do this. All the paradigm is based on fear, is based on limitations. And we have uh, uh, learned uh, to condition our mind to be so. So we keep on being trapped and we don't know how to release 
uh, to get out and, uh, and, and live our lives. Right? And we don't know how to get to the treat. We can always be lured in. That is the manipulative character of the world where we live in. Amazing how that works. So what I teach people uh, simply by going into the ice bath, let it go. Let it go. You know what happens when you let go? When you create a mentality that learns to let go and observe, the body adapts. The mind adapts. When you let go, you let go of the uh, uh, neocortex, the thinking brain. Then you let the deeper brain solve the matter of the stress. Once, once you learn that, you learn to have confidence. Confidence is the ability to go into any part of your own brain by letting it go, by letting it do what the body and mind is capable of by nature, by natural birthright. To be happy is a matter, you, nobody, nobody doesn't want to be happy, but we are trapped. And we go with the, uh, with the, the, the movements of environmental stress and daily stress and this and that. And uh, we live a little and we have no longer control over our own life. Our own life is composed by happiness, by strength and by health. Only, where is it? How can we learn to guarantee? Go into the ice bath. It's a very simple uh, exercise. The ice bath is learning uh, uh, to let go so that the deeper part of the brain is able to open up and solve the matter. That is adaptation. An adaptive inner power is able to deal where your thinking brain is not able to do it. Thus you release and you get and the treat and you are released and you go for a lot more. It's amazing. Absolutely. It's a good the, the, the thing, the way you take <laughs> it on with the horse, and, uh, and uh, I love it. I love it. And I love the way you get into the brain and into the psyche. Now I know why so many people love you. That's so <laughs> you get people on with your stories, and they, they are real. They are real, and we together, man, it's a... Uh, it's, uh, the dynamic duo, man. Absolutely. And I'm honored. Thank you so much for your kind words, Wim. I deeply appreciate that. Thank you. This means a lot to me. I love you so much. I appreciate it. So good. Um, I just want to add something related to the confidence. You just mentioned a beautiful statement, a beautiful definition of confidence. And I just want to read another statement of confidence that was in your book that I thought was a beautiful definition. Confidence is a form of trust. It's like you place a bet on yourself, you tell your body what to do, and your body echoes back and says, yes. It's such a beautiful way of describing confidence. And I just wanted people to hear that. And I highly recommend people check out the book because it's, it's filled with so many little nuggets and little pieces of wisdom. Um, fear, fear is probably at the heart. It's the most important question that I ask because it's the thing that stops us it's the, the number one emotion, the mother of all emotions, shame, sadness, guilt, resentment, frustration, anger, everything comes out of fear. Everything has something related to fear. Fear is the, the mother emotion, negative emotion. It does serve us, obviously, um, but a lot of problems that people have in life is they hold on to the emotions when the emotions were, were meant to be a, a, a temporary visitor, not a permanent resident but they suppress how they feel. And breathing is one of the most beautiful ways of expressing yourself and releasing um, your emotions. And I've seen people, I've done a, a breathing session to a group during the horse whispering uh, experience actually. And there was a, uh, an 18 year old girl, as soon as I was done with the three cycles, the three rounds, she burst into tears for about I would say at least 10 to 15 minutes. And they told me that she, this was the first time she had cried in five years. She had a traumatic experience that happened five years ago. And this was the first time she had cried. And she was with her best friend that was with her the whole time. The next day, 
she was an entirely different person because for the first three days of the session of, the, of that training, she was very quiet, very reserved. She didn't talk at all. And then she became so flamboyant, so, so, so full of life and full of joy and conversation. She suddenly turned into an extrovert. She started, it was such a beautiful thing to watch. And all that was from three rounds that released something that was trapped emotionally, a trauma for five years. And all it took was crying out, which is something really important to mention. The only way for us to communicate with other people and our own minds, the only way for us to emotionally express is through muscle. And the number one muscle that we need to express ourselves with is breathing, is the, is the diaphragm for breathing. But in general, when you cry, you're using muscles. When you laugh, you're using muscles. When you exercise, you're using muscles. When you sing, when you dance, when you do yoga, when you stretch, you are doing, you are just simply using muscles. It is the mode of communication. And you have beautifully incorporated so many different things, uh, so many different ways of using muscle. But um, have you, uh, T I'm not sure if you're familiar with TRE, that's trauma releasing exercise, but it's, it's an exercise that, um, David Berselli, Dr. David Berselli created, where you do 15 minutes of exercise and then 15 minutes lying down on the ground and the body starts to shake uncontrollably without you controlling it in any way or form. And then you stop. And what it does is the body's releasing trauma that is stored in the body, in the muscles. And you do this every other day for 30 days. It gets rid of all the traumas that you've had in your life, supposedly. The different mili the military in the U.S., I think they use it. And it's based on the idea that when a deer is chased by a cheetah and escapes, it then starts shaking or it loses consciousness and goes into an epileptic fit because the body needs to get rid of the extra adrenaline. And we have learned, and this ties into what you said, we have learned to suppress and be comfortable, but also to suppress our ability to express, and therefore we keep the trapped adrenaline, we keep the trapped trauma, the, the trapped stressful experience, and we don't release it. And animals release it naturally, and we used to do that. And then at some point we stopped. So I just thought it was, it was important to mention that as well. Yes, it's uh, amazing. And so uh, the, the, what we uh, do not do anymore, what animals do, is alkalizing the muscle tissue. Now, through the exercise of uh, going into the, uh, the push-up, you can feel you can actually do more while not even breathing. This means you are able to change the biochemistry in the muscle. You're able to influence that. So any trapped, chronic uh, cortisol in our uh, muscle tissue, anywhere in our body, but also genetical, genetical trauma is also trapped in our muscle tissue, we are able to release that now. We are alive. We are human beings. We have a will. Our will is connected with neurotransmitters, with deep hormonal system, the endocrine system, the immune system, lymphatic system, to learn to release everything. We are built to do that. Coming to trauma, It's simply now uh, uh, the breathing is able to get into the muscle tissue to uh, release the chronic stressor, the chronic cortisol, but also to enhance its ability and to release trauma. It's threefold. We take away the stress, performance uh, becomes higher, and we release the absolute deep stress. Even stress or uh, trauma Even trauma, we don't, uh, we are not aware of. It's amazing. So Absolutely. there it is. It is simple and we explain it has come. It has come to our awareness and the speculation is out of there because we got the signs. It is out there and we are built to be happy, strong and healthy. We are built to be Uh, feeling great within our minds and our bodies because we are beautiful all. Our mind is beautiful. Our soul is beautiful. Life is beautiful. Let's be beautiful and strong 
and share it with everybody in the world. Amazing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, the, I have a question. I have a couple of questions. So my, my question is how, I mean, because I'm, I'm very conscious of your time right now. We had... Easy does it. Easy does it. Okay. Okay. So, um, so one of the questions is the men- mental, Ill- mental, s- mental stillness. There's a chapter in your book about mental stillness, and I love what you said about reflection, that, the, that you, you can't really see who you are if you're not mentally, if there's no mental stillness. It kind of, it's like the mind creates an inner canvas, and the inner canvas allows you to uh, see your reflection. But with the p- presence of thoughts, it's difficult to see your reflection. But in the absence of thoughts and you're mentally still, you can see your reflection clearly. So there are things that were mentioned in the exercise that I'd like to, I'd like to ask two questions, actually. One of the things that you mentioned is scan your body while visualizing. Now, my question is, what did you mean by scanning your body? The, in terms of the charging, I think my phone is about to die and I didn't anticipate that. which is amazing. So I'm charging it right now. I may actually go for it in a second and get the charger. Uh, This is, yeah. So what did you mean by scan your body while visualizing? What what is meant by that? Yeah, about the stillness. If you you look at water, if you look at, at water at the pond, which could be full of life, but you don't see it because the water is not transparent, uh, nor still on the surface. So then uh, uh, if, you, if you begin to scan, you are able to make it still. Then you see the depth. Then you see what needs to be done. Then you can regulate with your breathing whatever needs to be done. I mean, the pH level, the alkalinity, etc., the clearance of your body. You can do that. Then visualization is a natural process to come uh, to get uh, uh, in terms with what you want to visualize. I did all my uh, uh, my records and I saw always the images. And then I knew I can do it. That that is one thing. uh, About uh, the other one, uh, they compared in brain scans uh, people who are doing four hours of mindfulness a day, four years in brain scans, comparison, and then the people doing the breathing techniques, the people who were doing breathing techniques within 10 minutes were able to go deeper inside the brain, into the depth of the brain, than the people exercising four hours of mindfulness for years. You see what I mean? Uh, What I mean is, we have an ability at a certain moment, neurologically, through the deep breathing, to create a connection inside uh, the depth of our brain. And there is a transparency. There is the stillness. There is the mere being. And then uh, the visualizations, they come naturally. Because this is a natural mechanism that helps you to attain your goal and to have confidence because you see, hey, this is appearing. This is what I got to do. This is what the uh, visual quest is all about. You see who you are and you are going to attain that what you see. But you have to be still. You have to go into the depth. And now the breathing is able, and take that from me, guys, the breathing is able to neurologically bring you at will into the depth, learn about it. Then you are able to scan all your body just through the power of interoception. And this is the last study I showed, interoception, top-down regulation. So before you do something, you want to revise like a car when you go for a big journey. Check the oil. Check uh, the tires. 
te- check the engine, the dynamo, the battery, etc. Et because you're going to go for a long journey or you're going to go into the depths and you want to be sure that you are able to go and to execute whatever is going on within your beautiful self. You want to check it, and you got a natural ability to body scan through the mind. It's top-down regulation. It's all science now, and we are now bringing it because we are pioneers. We are the first ones to get through the paradigm of how to how do I do this? What is abstract? Where is it? It's no longer abstract. It is here. We are built to be gone into the depths of our physiology of the mind and body within 10 minutes. Just follow the breath. Scan yourself and go for what you want to go because you are built to be able to attain your goals. It's natural. That's that's amazing. Uh, I want to comment on something you mentioned about follow, which is follow the breath. And then I want to ask you one more question about mental stillness, just to close that as well, to close that loop. The first is follow the breath. For anybody that's listening right now that is watching, you have to understand that is a profound statement. Follow the breath. Because what, what is actually being asked when you when he's saying follow the breath, it's really about what Wim Hof is saying about follow the breath is allow the breathing to be to guide you so imagine that the breath in itself is a light beam and you are tethered to the end of it follow it visualize that as you're breathing in and out and see where the breath takes you inside your body and see how it takes you out imagine following the breath instead of trying and this ties into the idea of force allow the the breath to guide you don't let don't guide the guide in another, in a nutshell, let the guide guide you. Let the guide do its job. Let the breath do its job. So that's that's regarding that. The question I have: um, How do you? One of the things that you said is tell your body what you expect it to do, and I love that. My question is: How do you tell the body what you expect it to do? Do you? visualize that body part doing the thing that you want it to do or do you just visualize yourself as a whole doing it or do you say it internally hear your voice talking to that part or talking to your body as a whole how i just want to know this is about breaking you know diving deep into the psychology of wim hof and this is one of the questions i wanted to ask about you specifically how do you do it yes uh So I go back. I go back into Detroit to be very clear on this matter. Yes. Yes. Uh, in the morning, where I had to go to the university to show uh, in brain scans how to uh, how to just by using the power of intention, the power of intention, very important. The intention, the intention uh, to make something uh, physical happening just by the power of our intention yes so the uh, it was unknown in psychiatry that the power of intention top down regulation of bodily physical uh, presence physical ailments physical whatsoever stress etc was able to be nullified or neutralized just by the power of intention. But it is there. It is now there, and it is a fact. It has been published. It's a, it's the brain over body. So you don't need no longer uh, to visualize neuro-linguistic programming, uh, uh, do stage one, uh, say, uh, no, no, no. It's all your intention. Subtly. You remember in the earlier stage of our conversation, subtle, learn to let go. Then you will get a hold of the subtle mechanisms inside the brain. And then suddenly, by the intuition, you get a ding, like from an iPhone, ding, what's up? Hey, what's up? Here I am, intuition, saying, hey, you can do it. You get a, you get a direct answer from your own brain, by the intuition, because it makes the calculation of what is going to happen. 
in time space. We think about time space, but intuition is not bound by time and space. It goes everywhere and uh, mm -hmm. only needs our intention because that's the program we uh, tap into. We really want it. If you really want it, then it really happens. And we have to learn to exercise it. And here it comes. The first time people began to run the 100 meters within 10 seconds it was one guy in the whole of history. Then the yeah. next year, 10, 15 people could do it. Yeah. Or the four miles within so much time, and, and suddenly uh, a, a whole a bunch of people could do it. It's in the mind. And let me tell you, we have shown in the mind now that the boundaries are no more there and that uh, individually every person in the world has the power of intention but needs to learn to the inner signals and it's fast. It can be done in one day. Only if you trust yourself. Only if you go and let it go and let it come, therefore. And when that happens, then you will find the real school of life to be very beneficial, to enter into life full bloom, making use of so much more power of the mind and body. That's why we are here to de-abstract to uh, make transparent and clear and nice and touchable and tangible here and now and simple that the power of the mind is ours. Our mind is our mind. And it's beautiful. And until it's not beautiful, because you can sense, make it beautiful. Get rid of the bullshit. Get rid of the crap. Get rid of what is not yours. Because you are beautiful. Beautiful. That's beautiful. You're beautiful and what you just said is beautiful. Permission came to mind so much as you were talking when you talk about intention. A lot of people stop themselves from achieving what they want because they don't have clarity about what they want. They didn't set the, right, the proper intention. But the other thing is permission. When you set an intention, you are suggesting that you are, you're automatically giving yourself permission to pursue the thing that you want. When you visualize what you want, you are giving yourself permission to see it. And if you cannot see it in your mind, it cannot happen. And you start off, you broke the 26, the 26 Guinness World Records, you've achieved everything by starting internally, by connecting with yourself, by setting an intention, by giving yourself permission, and one of the ways that you've done that is through visualization, by seeing it. Because if you can't see it, it's not possible. It well, comes, the only thing, yeah. Yeah. It comes the only very thing. clear with uh, images, with feelings, gut feelings, intuition. You see it. It's very clear. Uh, you don't have to learn about anything. You just need to learn or to de-block, to, to let it go. Just go within, it's all there. And, that, uh, and with that comes the beauty, beauty of it all. Uh, uh, the psychology of it all, once again, is uh, to make it simple. Yes. And it, uh, 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 it is here. But, uh, begin to understand, uh, it's, it's here, guys. Sorry, but the simplicity and the beauty of your own power, of your own uh, uh, unlimited power of your own mind is come to your doorstep. Do you want it? Do you let it in? There it is. It's beautiful. It's yours. Please. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. One thing to mention about visualization for people to understand and the link between visualization and fear, because fear is a huge topic is when you think about it, if you remember the boy that cried wolf, the boy cried wolf two times and the villagers came. He cried wolf the third time, he, they didn't come anymore because they learned the lesson. Because the, the thing that we need to understand about the mind and the difference between the mind and that boy is when the boy cried wolf, he was messing with the villagers. When the mind cries wolf, it's not messing with you. It actually believes it's seeing, it actually believes it's hearing um, a wolf and, and it's responding to what it actually believes is there. So it's not actually messing with you. It's trying to help you, it's trying to protect you. 
I remember when I was with the pickpocket asking him about his thoughts on fear. He said, I believe that fear lives in the future. And I asked him, what do you mean? And he said, think about it. When you hear gunshots outside your home, you're not afraid of the gunshots. You're afraid of the gunmen coming into your home. And if they're already in your home, you're no longer afraid of them being in your home. You're afraid of them shooting you. And if they're shooting you, you're no longer afraid of them shooting you. You're afraid of the effect of the shot. So at the end of the day, in a way, what he was saying is fear is a never-ending mirage that you keep chasing that never comes to fruition. But it's a visualization. And I came back after that thinking about what he said, fear living in the future. Ah, And then I, I was like, okay, so that's a visualization. So I'm like, okay, if fear lives in the future and the future doesn't exist, then fear lives in a dimension that doesn't exist. And that blew my mind. Fast forward, 2017, summer, Spain, Wim Hof, seven days, I was with you. And I think the first day we, we did five minutes of an ice bath, second, 10 minutes, third, 15 minutes. I think the fourth day we jumped off a cliff. To me, that was interesting because here's the thing. When I, went, when I was standing on the edge looking down, I'm just thinking about it right now. Um, there was this fear, this trembling in the moment. And the reason for that is that was, and for everybody to understand, that was the first time I ever jumped into water in my life. So to me, that was a huge step. But then the thing about fear is the moment of hesitation is when the fear can stop you. So Tony Robbins, I remember, talked about it. If you want to start working out, you, you, you have the shoes, you, know, you have your shoes ready, you wake up, you slip your feet in the shoes, you start walking. By the time the mind wants to stop you, it's already too late because you're in momentum. So I immediately jumped into jumped off the cliff. And obviously, when I hit the water, I realized that the water was actually colder than the ice bath, which blew my mind. So we I just swam out dried up. And then I thought about what happened. And I remember what the pickpocket said. I realized that what happened was, I was thinking on the edge of the cliff, if fear lives in the future, the fear just visited me in the present moment. So if I quickly jump, I'm basically racing fear into the future. If I get there first, I eliminate the fear. And the moment I made that jump, it kind of, so I was racing fear into the future and I got there first. And that was something, I don't think we ever have this, I, I don't think I ever told you this story, but it's, a, it's the connection of, ra- the concept of racing fear into the future to get there first. And that's, that's, what I, that's what I did. And thanks to this ice bath experience and the Wim Hof experience, seven days, there's so many fears that were conquered, so much that was obliterated during that period of time. Um, I remember when I was in the ice bath, um, I think we had the conversation about this and I posted a video and people that are on my channel probably have seen this. When I was in the ice bath, um, it felt like, in the ice bath, the ice bath is like a liaison between me and my unconscious mind. And the unconscious mind was like a child panicking, seeking comfort, being the adult, to, towards the adult who is me. If I panicked, imagine a child panicking and then the adult panics. It's game over. Because the child is seeking comfort from the adult. You have, the adult has to be strong. And so the moment I started to calm myself down and relax consciously through the conscious breathing in the ice bath, the child calmed down, the mind calmed down. And all it took was a few seconds of focusing on that. This ties me to something I wanna ask you and we taught, we kind of touched upon that previously, thinking versus feeling. When you did the documentary last year with Yes Theory and they joined you in Poland, one of the, the members was trembling in the, in the water and he's saying, I'm shaking, I'm shaking, I'm shaking. And you, you yelled and you're like, you are thinking. And then he suddenly stopped. It hit me so hard when you said that because it's really the issue. When I am in my head, if you look at boxers, they say when you're in your head, you're dead. In acting, if you're on stage and you're thinking, you lose the lines, you, not, you disconnect from the audience. In photography, when, when you are thinking, It's not an interesting, it's not the same as feeling. If you are feeling, that's a beautiful photo for people to see because it expresses you. 
So in the ice bath, it's the thinking being in your head is what disconnects you from your body, from connecting in order for you to calm your body down in the first place. But we in life constantly, constantly focus on thinking, focus on thinking as a tool to get ourselves to, to reclaim control. But it's the very thing that takes away control. And that's the force. That's the idea of forcing it. Letting go of the need to think and focus on feeling. We try to think our way out of problems instead of feeling our way out of it. We try to think our way into control instead of feeling our way into control. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on that idea of thinking versus feeling. Yes. Wow. Uh, you talk good, man. It's good talking. Uh, Thank you. I got to readjust. Actually, it me. Here it is. Yes. Okay. Now, fear... Fear is a signal. Fear is uh, 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 dwelling with you all the time. Time and space is the uh, uh, is fear's place. It is the place of the space. Uh, time and space is the place of fear. It goes always on. It competes with you. It competes because it is your friend. It is a hmm. messenger. It tries to uphold. You are running away from your fears. You're trying to run away from your fears. And your fears behind is your friend. Listen to your fear. Face your fear. When you face your fear, the blood pressure will calm down. It will go into the depth of the brain. And in the depth of the brain, you were not. But now you are. And thus the messenger goes away because you understood the ma uh, message. Fear will go away because uh, you, uh, you have done, you followed up the signal. You go into the depth, into the subconscious. And the subconscious is past uh, time and space. The subconscious is able to give you a feeling of deep confidence because it is connected with whatever is going to happen in time, space, in the future, before you know it. But you consciously let it go, let it do its work. That is trust, deep trust. And the confidence, once again, and let's keep it simple, Yes. The confidence is the ability to go into any place of your own brain. And lately we showed in Germany, in one of the two best brain scans of the world, that the breathing was able to activate at will. Normally at will we have a control over 16% of our brain, brain's neural activity. Now it was 100%. Hundred. That doesn't necessarily mean that we uh, tap in with our thoughts in every part of our brain. No, we learn to let go. We learn to get everywhere as an observant, as a being that observes the stillness of the waters and the magic is happening. We are looking at the pond, the water is still, It's beautiful because the fish come up, the salamanders come up, the green and the sun is flicking in. It's all there. But we always are into these thoughts, turmoil. So thus the ripples prevent us to let go because we don't trust. We don't trust the deep of the water to be able to do what we cannot think about or control directly with our uh, way of thinking, the way the Westerners did. That's why the natives, the natives are simple. They are beautiful with their nature. Then the Westerners came with their thinking, that thinking dominating brain, taking yeah. over, making bridges, making rockets, polluting the uh, world. Uh, uh, exploiting it, more competition, wars, tension, possessiveness, all that. And yet, with 10 cars and 20 houses, you're still not happy, strong, and healthy. 
Yes. This is the time for awakening. Fear needs to go. We have to listen to Mother Nature. The messenger has come. Hey, man, fear is, uh, there is no need for the messenger to, uh, 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 to come no more. Because now we found a way to tap into the depth of our brain consciously, into the brain stem, into the limbic system, everywhere. Create the right blood flow, the neural activity, and learn for the first time at will, consciously, to get into any space of our own brain to do whatever is necessary. So there it is. And then fear is subsiding because the message has been understood. Oh, my God. The Okay, so two two things come to mind from what you said. One is what you said. In a way, don't wait for the messenger. We now know how to visit the messenger in their house. You don't have to wait for the messenger to come to you. So you don't have to wait for that. Don't wait for it. Go for it. The second is um, fear is kind of a time-traveling friend that is visiting you from the future to tell you what's about to happen. So instead of crucifying, instead of hurting the, the fear itself or attacking the fear, listen to what the fear is trying to tell you about the future that the fear came from. So I love that. I love that. Um, in terms of, there, there, there was a question that someone was asking and I noticed it because there's so many questions, so many people wanted to join. But as everybody can see, there's so much that we've uncovered, but there's so much to actually talk about. When I prepared for this interview, the more I prepared, the more I realized I this like there's no way I'm going to get through all the questions I want to ask Wim. There's no way we're going to talk about everything. I have no idea how many hours we. I we told can... you. I told you, Sam. I, I know. We're going to go into the unknown. I know. I know. And we and can go and we can leave our questions and answers and this and that. We yeah. are going into a new thinking, a new exactly. paradigm. And it's very interesting because we can share the, the directness and the simplicity of that. It's like the baby in the hands. There is nothing wrong with the legs of the baby, but the neurology yet is not set. And that's why it's not able to walk. Let's start and explore the power of our mind because we have never trodden the neurological pathways in our own mind into the depths so, uh, and feel liberty because we can go anywhere because the unlimited power of the mind is now ours again beautiful as every single sentence you've mentioned would it be possible there's one person that asked the question about so is it possible to achieve trust through breathing i would say yes obviously i think it's a straightforward I, Trust, and I think that's a beautiful way to put it, actually. I don't remember who mentioned it, so apologies for that. But trust is an amazing way. Uh, breathing is an amazing way to create trust. The way you breathe creates trust. Um, and I think that's, that's definitely something. There's a question. Is it possible to just give at least one person a chance to ask a question? Because I told people to prepare the questions and, and write down, take notes. I think they, I don't think anybody really needs to ask a question right now. I think I'm hoping that everybody has 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 gathered so much information, valuable insights, epiphanies. Um, but if there's anyone that has a question, whatever question that you've written, if you can write it down, I'm going to pick one or the first thing that comes to mind. The first thing multiple to sclerosis I saw. Okay, did you read the question? Yes, multiple sclerosis is a, a, over, a, a result of an overactive uh, uh, immune system, inflammation. We can bring that down. Yes, autoimmune. That, that's so yes. positive. Not only that, also uh, arthritis, atrosis, uh, uh, colitis, uh, endometriosis. Any autoimmune disease is based in... Uh, into uh, inflammation caused by an overactive immune system. Doing the breathing, you bring down the inflammation, which is the cause and effect of uh, uh, autoimmune diseases. So yes, I, I saw just one question. But we, uh, Sam, I think we are up for another session, another day. I there, agree. And then we uh, gather all the good questions yeah. We will answer them because we are entering 
into the unlimited power of the mind, which is a quest, which is very exciting. And I want to see the reactions of the people, how it changes their psychology, how it deepens their trust again into their own power. Because everybody has it and let's share this. And then the next session is going to be just flowers everywhere and beauty, beauty. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, we're, we're five minutes away from two hours, which I don't know if it's even possible for us to save this on IGTV, but I will try my best to do it. The question, a lot of people are saying, please save this live. Um, hopefully, someone has screen recorded it at least. And at the same time, I'm going to be posting it on IGTV. And I don't know if Wim will, but I'm going to be posting it on my page. Uh, hopefully, if the two hour, if, if we can. Yeah, uh, uh, no, of course, it was... Uh, as they say, very eloquently say, it was good shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah, absolutely. We gotta say very the good shit. Said. Exactly. So I, I hope everybody has benefited from this. And there's so much more to talk about. There's something I was mentioning to Wim about uh, the psychology, my psychological breakdown of breathing itself and the Wim Hof breathing. And, and I have questions about the way Wim Hof addresses a few things in his method. We didn't get a chance to talk about any of that because this is such a huge topic. So I think we need uh, a second round um, where we can either talk a bit about the remaining. I'm afraid so. Yeah. And yeah. Fear. And you know fear? <laughs> fear. I'm yeah. afraid so. <laughs> <laughs> and we can even ask, we can, we can open it up for Q&A. We can open it up for Q&A. Here's, here's, okay. So here's what I want to do before, before we end this. Um, everybody that asked questions that weren't answered, because here's the problem right now on Instagram, when I save it, um, it stays on the live and I can see all the comments. I go through the, the video again and I see all the comments and I write them down. There is no way for us to now keep it on Instagram live for 24 hours. So when I post it on the IGTV, there are no comments. So I can no longer see your comments or, or read your questions. So if you have any questions for Wim, please just write, just like what we did with the Wim, uh, with the World Mental Health Day, WMH, or health, yeah, W, I can't even, I'm, ah, WHD. I can't even say, World, WH, no, it was, I think, World Mental Health Day, so WMH, and oh. enough, your son was basically switching it. And he was like, oh, this sounds like WHM, Wim Hof Method. So let's just do this for the DMs where you put WHM for Wim Hof Method. And I will see all those DMs. I have over 15,000 DMs. It's hard for me to go through everything. But I will scan the ones that have WHM. So type that and write your question or whatever feedback you want. And I will go through that. And that will prepare me, and I will even mention the names of people live next time I have the session with Wim. And we will also take live questions as well. So either way, we could play it. I hope this is helpful. Uh, Wim, thank you so much for, for this amazing opportunity. What's good? You, you are good. the first guest. You are the first guest, officially, the first guest on my Instagram live. And this may open up a lot of different guests, but this is... This is just amazing for me to have you as my first guest and for us to have close to two hours. I am so grateful, so grateful and so appreciative of you taking the time. Um, and I look forward to connecting with you soon on another session. And we will, we will stay connected regarding that. And if there's anything you want to say at the end, please, I'll leave the last word for you. If you want to talk about, mention anything about any products, anything, the book, the website, anything. Yeah, there's a lot going on. The thing is, I liked your talking. I liked your explaining and taking me on into stories which raised new questions within me. Very interesting. Interesting Good. conversation this was. And it is live, so it's no bullshit. It's, we just came up with this. And it was good yeah. shit. It was good shit. Let's bring it uh, on for the next time. I'm looking forward. Good conversations. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Wim. Have an amazing week, amazing month, incredible month, and I will connect with you soon. Thank you, everybody, 
for attending and I hope you enjoyed it and I will connect with everybody soon as well. I love you, Wim. Say hi to everybody, your family, Isabel, you know, everyone. Thank you. Everyone. I'll see Great. you soon. Good. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.